Hello, dear viewer. I found this story very tempting to share it with you. Honestly, it's the first time I've read about it myself. So make yourself a cup of tea and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on new stories and new parts of already released stories. Have a good appetite and watch. Kiss for the New Year, Chapter 1 Coming home from work, I went to the post office, and as usual, my box was full of junk mail and bills. I flipped through them and tossed most of them into the trash can next to my desk. Between the visa application and the bill from Konoko lay an envelope, written in a flowing handwriting I knew all too well. I'd been getting one letter a month for over a year. She guessed I was getting mail forwarded from my old address, so she wrote and sent letters there to be forwarded to me. I met Pat at a wedding reception. A guy I worked with was getting married, and the whole office was invited to the wedding. After the wedding, everyone went to the reception. I had been there for about an hour when this tall blonde woman walked in. She was getting everyone's attention and was definitely getting mine as well, but she wasn't alone, so I put her out of my mind. Well, not really put her out of my mind. The hall was small, so she was in sight most of the time. Maybe another hour went by, and I noticed that she seemed to be getting more and more upset with her date. Right after the bride and groom cut the cake, I got up to go to the bathroom. On the way, I had to pass the table where the blonde was sitting. As soon as I got to the table, I heard her say, Bastard! As quietly as she said it, it sounded like it was addressed to me, so I turned to her. Pardon me? She blushed and said, It's not to you, but to that worthless piece of work, my beau. All he does is drink. I've been trying to get him out on the dance floor since we got here, but all he's done is drink, and now that lump has left me. I guess I deserved it, though. That's what I get for going on a blind date. Relieved that she didn't think I was a bastard, I made my way to the bathroom and then back to the table I shared with a few co-workers. The next time the orchestra played, I glanced over and saw her watching the dancers and stomping her feet. On a whim, I stood up walked over to her and asked her to dance. She said yes, and that was the beginning of a torrid affair that resulted in our marriage three months later. Patricia Ann was a computer genius and worked for a large corporation as a systems administrator. She tried to explain to me what she was doing, but I'm computer illiterate, so it all went in one ear. I know how to turn on my comp and how to log on to the internet, but that's the limit of my computer savvy. I make my living as a heavy equipment mechanic, and I'm pretty good at it, so soon the two of us had saved enough to put a down payment on a house. We had a great marriage, at least I thought we did. I was madly in love with her, and she certainly felt the same way about me. But in the sixth year of our marriage, something changed. When it started, I couldn't determine with any degree of certainty, and it could have gone on for quite a while before I noticed. Patty always left work one night a week with the girls, and was usually home by nine. I didn't notice as the time grew to 9.30, then 10, then 10.30, and it wasn't until later that I remembered those evenings. Patty started working late a couple times a week, usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays. She attributed this to an unexpectedly large contract with critical deadlines. They weren't equipped to handle such a large order, and until management made some decisions about which way to go, everyone was asked to work overtime to get the order. Decisions? I asked. What kind of decisions? They want to make sure the contract will be long-term, before investing in more equipment and hiring more people. And how long will it last? Maybe a couple months. I don't know exactly. A couple months stretched to eight before I started complaining about it, to which she always responded calmly. It doesn't have to be that long, baby. I know you don't like it, and I don't like it either. I don't like dragging boxes around the platform, but I promise to help. And then... One Wednesday night, she called me and told me she had to work late. Anne was supposed to work tonight, but she had an accident and is now in the hospital, so I would have to fill in for her. The next morning at breakfast, I asked, What about Anne? Patty looked at me in confusion and then said, Anne, ah, yes, Anne. Not really. They have her in a stretch. Both legs and one hip are broken, and she's going to be out of work for a while. The poor thing is having a heck of a time. She went on vacation with her boyfriend, and before it was over, he told her he found someone else. The airline lost her luggage on the way home, and now this accident. So now you're gonna be working overtime on Wednesdays? Yeah, and maybe even one or two Fridays. 
That's when I started thinking about things. Up until that point, her overtime was annoying, and that's all I thought it was. Just a stupid bunch of incompetent managers who couldn't get their heads out of their asses and solve a problem. It all started with the confusion on her face when I asked about Anne. It was as if she had lied, forgotten about it, and then had to hurry up and cover it up. And if that was the case, was she lying about having to work late? That's when I remembered the Wednesday nights spent with the girls from work, and how they started to end up later and later. I wonder what the computer guy is doing moving boxes on the loading dock? That Sunday, everything came together for me. I was doing routine maintenance on Patty's car, I changed the oil, added windshield washer fluid, and then decided to change a tire. When I opened the trunk to remove the spare tire, I discovered two suitcases. Curious, I opened one and found it full of clothes. The other was full of sexy lingerie, high-heeled shoes and the like. Heels and lingerie I'd never seen before. I don't know who Patty wore them for, but certainly not me. So much for Patty working overtime. There could only be one reason for the multiple outfit changes and all that sexy junk in her trunk. And it certainly wasn't work-related. I'm a slow thinker sometimes, but I try not to be a fool. I analyze problems, run them through my head, look at them from all angles, and think through all the options before I make a decision. Since it was the vacation season, and things were pretty busy, I put off following Pat until the end of the year. I didn't have to wait long, though. Patty's Christmas party was scheduled for Wednesday, and she was looking forward to it. I had a last-minute job that prevented me from going with her. She was upset. No, she wasn't. She was pissed off, and took a big snap at me, and I was no better, yelling back at her. Now you know how I feel when you work overtime. I said I would try to finish in time to at least show up, but that didn't seem to calm her down at all. On the day of the party, I worked as hard as I could to try to make it on time. The party started at 7, and by kicking ass I was able to finish work, get home, shower, change, and be there by 9. I walked in and saw Patty hotly hugging and French kissing some guy while people were stomping their feet, pounding their fists on tables and yelling, Get a room, you two, and take your novel to the motel. I turned around and left and no one even noticed I was there. On the way home, I tried to figure out the reasons that might have made her go looking for a man, but I never realized anything. For God's sake, I treated her like a queen. I did everything I could for her. I helped around the house. I cooked at least three times a week and cleaned up after myself. In the evening, waiting for her to come home, I did a load of laundry. I cleaned my den and the first floor bathroom next to my den. All this in addition to taking care of the house, yard, and both cars. I never forgot a birthday or anniversary. I remembered the day we met and gave her a card every year on that day. The same thing on the anniversary of the day I proposed to her. I never even looked at other women. I had done everything I could to be the best husband she could hope for. So what had gone wrong? The only thing I could think about was the 20 pounds I had gained in the last five years. Was that the cause? Was I no longer physically attractive to her? It didn't matter, though. What I saw meant one thing. We had missed our marriage. I loved her deeply, but not enough to make me share her, and not enough to make me fight for her. So what if I wrestled her away from this guy? Could I wrestle her away from the next guy? And the one after that? No. As much as it pains me to admit it, Patty and I are breaking up. But I've decided one thing. 20 pounds has got to go. I'm gonna be fit when I start seeing women again. I've also decided not to get divorced. I'm never getting married again. And Patty and I get along just fine while she plays with her lover. So I'll maintain the status quo and save myself the hassle and expense of a divorce. All I have to do is pretend I don't know anything about her lover. That evening, back home, she was in a great mood and wanted to make love. It would have been unnatural for me to refuse her, and besides, I was curious to see if I could be said to be getting scraps in sex. Surprisingly, she felt the same as she had on any of the hundreds of other nights we'd made love, but damn it all told me that I'd been the second man long enough. Though I wondered if she was trying to make love to me to death with me out of guilt, or was she getting a charge out of giving up the leftovers after her lover? I went to the gym on Monday, sat down with a personal trainer, and he put together a program for me. I went to the gym on my way to work on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and after a month I started running on the weekends, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and only rested on Sunday. My relationship with Patty remained unchanged. She still acted like I was the one and only, well, I never showed that I knew extra. She still worked late at least two nights a week, 
and I stopped whining about it. In two months I had lost 18 pounds, strengthened a little, and felt pretty good. Marla and Sally, the two girls who worked with me in the office, both commented on the change, and Sally asked me what had caused it. I told her I was trying to get in shape to be more attractive to women. Oh? And what does Patty have to say about that? We have an understanding. Uh-oh, open marriage? Yeah. Well, stud, I'm ready if you are. That caught me off guard. I was always flirting with Sally and Marla, and they flirted back. I never expected it to be anything but flirting, but from the sound of Sally's voice, she was serious. What the hell? I said to myself. Go for it, Jerry. Knowing that Patty would be working Thursday, I said to Sally, Are you busy Thursday? I guess I am now. What do you mean? It's up to you. Okay, I'll figure something out when you pick me up. A casual dress. I'll be there at 6.30, okay? Marla, who had been standing listening, suddenly jumped up with the words, I have precedence here. And Sally laughed. You overslept. You lost precedence. Now wait your turn. I arrived at Sally's at half past seven, and she appeared at the door in her robe. Am I too early? No, I'm already dressed for our date. And she unfastened her robe. She was without her robe. I think we'll have dessert first, then dinner, and then we'll decide what to do. She led me into the bedroom. It was one of the best moments of my life, and I was close to finishing what I had started in a few minutes. I let her know I was ready, and she pulled away from me to say, Do it, honey. I want it. We never had dinner that night, and I was a very happy man. Sally walked me to the door, kissed me passionately, and asked when we could meet again. I can do Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm available Tuesday and Thursday. I stopped by work on the way home, showered in the locker room, changed into my work clothes, and then went down to Bill's bar for a beer to keep me out of breath, then went home. When I got home, Patty was still awake. Where were you? Knowing you wouldn't be home, I decided to stop by the guy's house after work and play pool. I hope you didn't drink too much because I want a lover's night with you, honey. It wasn't easy for me to fulfill her request, but I managed it nonetheless. It took me a while to get my mind off the drink. I'll have to watch out for that in the future. I had completely forgotten that Patty always comes home agitated when she is working late, and I must see to it that I leave some energy for her. For the next six weeks, Sally and I did this, and then one evening she said to me, It's Marla's turn now, Jerry. What's the matter? This is our last time. I want Marla to take over for me. I don't get a vote? Yes and no. You have a say in whether you want Marla, but this is definitely our last time together. You're a married man, Jerry, and I can't afford to get too deeply involved with you. There's no prospect for me here, so I'm letting you go. Be a good guy. We'll stay friends, and I won't have to quit my job, okay? Do you think Marla really wants to? I know she's got a soft spot for you, honey. All you have to do is ask her out, and maybe that won't even be necessary. She knows we're stopping and she can come to you. That's exactly what happened. On Friday, Marla came up to me and said, I hear you have Tuesday and Thursday free now. Can I take them? My first night with Marla was almost a repeat of my first night with Sally in that we didn't leave her apartment at all. There was a marked difference between Marla and Sally in their preferences. Who was I to argue with a woman? My affair with Marla lasted five weeks, and then she ended it for the same reason Sally did. I got too deeply involved with you, Jerry, and that's not good with a married man. They both said that if I were single, we could live together. They were both fun girls, and they were both great in bed, but getting divorced to be with either of them? Not serious. They both had an affair with a married man. Why would I want a girl like that? I already had one at home. Over the next eight months, I dated and slept with nine different women. None of the affairs lasted longer than a month, most only two or three weeks, but I didn't want anything long-term myself. My domestic situation hadn't changed. Patty still worked late a couple times a week, almost always on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so those were the meeting nights. I have no idea how much longer things would have gone the way they were going if it hadn't been for a strange coincidence. It was Wednesday, and I was at the gym. I had just finished my workout and was in the shower when the man who had been with Patty at the Christmas party walked in with two other guys and started changing into gym clothes. I turned off the water, wiped myself dry with a towel, and listened to the conversation between the three men. It sounded like the guys had gone from evening to morning. 
There was some work-related conversation that led me to believe they worked for the same company, though not necessarily in the same office, and then one of them said, How are you doing with that fox you were with at the Christmas party? To be continued.